In this video, I'm going to show how to use some of the basic data creation commands in R. So it's best to start simple. The simplest way to create a vector is to use a colon um, from a number to a number. So if I wanted to create a vector of, of integers from 1 to 4, what I can do is just use the 1 colon 4 and I set it equal to something called a. This will create a vector called a that now is the vector 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, I can also do this backwards and it goes 4, 3, 2, and 1. You might ask, well, what happens if I go 0.5 to 4? Well, it has an increment of 1 and it just goes up 1 for, uh, for each one up until the, it can't go up anymore until the end. But the problem is these are just sequences of numbers. Even, even this more exotic one, it's not really anything but a sequence of numbers and I can't really skip from 1.5 to 3.5 if I want. So you might be interested in, well, how do I create a vector that is of my choosing? And a useful command for this is the C command. In other videos, I've called this the wrapper command. But essentially what this C command does is it binds elements together into a vector. So the most basic way to use the C command is to uh, take numbers and bind them together into a vector. So if I want 1, 2, 3, and 6 in a vector called Y, I can use the C command at, like this and it will give me a vector 1, 2, 3, and 6. So it doesn't just have to be numbers, but you can use the C command on vectors. So if I wanted to bind the vector 1, 2, 3, 4 to the vector 4, 3, 2, 1, I can use the C command, and that will do that just fine. So I've just bind, binded those two vectors into one. Um, let's call it Y2. Let's call it Y2. So now y2 is now a vector that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 3, 2, 1. Uh, so uh, we can use this C command with sequences, and we can bind sequences of numbers together, and, and this, can be, this can be useful. So, so that's, that's sort of its basic usage. Uh, some of its more interesting usage is you can create a vector recursively using a loop and the C command. Say we want to create a vector called weight. Uh, if you want to do that, a nice thing that you'll have to, or something you'll have to do, is you have to initialize the vector uh, before you even start off. So what, what we've done here is we've initialized the weight vector to be the null vector. It's a vector that has nothing in it. It's just a name, and it has no numbers or no data associated with it. But if I, if I do some kind of like C, weight with one well that's just going to be one so I can start off with something like weight being just some null vector and it, then I can sort of recursively build up a bigger and a bigger vector and say well for my index in this vector of indices you can see one through four so i is going to go from one two three and four it's going to take on each of those values it's going to start with one and then we're going to do everything that's in this for loop uh, for each of those indices first thing we'll do uh, is we're going to just create a, a random normal vector we're going to take uh, sort of random draws from that and we're going to store it into um, into a vector called temp. The first pass through, this is going to be a mean of 5. Uh, second pass through, it's going to be a mean of 10. Third pass through, it's going to be a mean of 20, so on and so forth. And then we'll give it a standard deviation of 2. So I'm going to call that the average. And when I compute that mean, I want to store it in this weight vector. And I just want to sort of tap, tag it onto the end. So when I first start off, I'm going to put mean temp sort of in place of where 1 is. And that's just going to be a vector of length 1 that has this mean temp. The next pass through, I uh, will have that being weight. It will be a vector of length 1. And that's going to be sitting right here. 
um, and then I'll compute a new temporary vector based on a different uh, different mean because I'll be at i equal 2 instead of i equal 1 and then I'll compute a new mean for that temp and I will tag it onto the end of this vector. You can see that this C command then will then be of length 2 because it will take the existing vector and tag a number onto the end of that. And we'll just keep doing this as we go along. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we run these lines. Let's see what it looks like. Well, sort of as we would expect, the mean weight is about 5, then about 10, then about 15, then about 20. So it's going to have some variability about that, but you can see kind of how this is going to work. If I changed the length of this to, say, 14, it's essentially going to it's going to create a length 14 vector instead. And it'll essentially go up by 5 for each iteration through the loop. So what you're seeing is each time I go through the loop, it's going to append its current calculation to this vector that's sort of being recursively generated. This is a nice application of this, and you may find it, find it useful to use this technique and the C command is a nice way to, to uh, keep track of those calculations that you've done one, one at a time. There are some other commands to generate vectors. Sequence command, SEQ command, is a fancy way to use the colon command. So as you can see, as we start off with seq 1, through 1, 4, it's a sequence from 1 to 4. And it's just like 1 colon 4. So the default step, if you, this is just like 0.5 colon 4 um, default step is 1 but the nice thing about the sequence command is that you can go by a different number of steps so if I want to sequence from 1 to 4 but I want to go by an increment of 0.5 I can do that or if I want a sequence of 1 to 4 but I want an increment of 0.4 I could also do that uh, it could also be useful to repeat a short sequence many times so to sort of point this out, I could think of generating a vector x1, where I go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, just using the C command. So that's kind of a tedious vector to create. So you could think of this x1, uh, it's repeating 1, 2, 3, four times. A much more efficient way to do this repeating is to use the rep command, and the rep command um, with the times argument, if we go rep 1, 2, 3, and times equal 4, it creates exactly that, uh, that sequence that we were interested in. And this, this becomes a much more efficient way to do it the more times we want to repeat a uh, short sequence. An alternative tiling of the numbers 1, 2, 3, you could think of uh, doing 1, 2, 3, but repeating each element of of that vector four times um, so uh, you know there's we could think of using the c command with the rep command so i could repeat the number one four times number two four times number three four times and then bind them together using the c command so that'll that'll do the trick or we could use the each option in this rep command Go one, two, one colon three, and then say each time uh, I want to repeat each number four times, and so that's going to also be a nice way to do. You can also use these in conjunction with one another. A vector that's twice the length, and essentially just repeat this vector that we just created. That's repeating each four times, but then repeating that exercise twice. So it can also be useful to organize your calculations into a matrix. So let's, uh, let's create a vector using the rnorm command that has a length of 12. Uh, it's got um, a mean of 8 and a standard deviation of 2. This is no coincidence. We got a length of 12. I want to think about maybe binding x2, which had a length of 12, and x1, which also had a length of 12. Um, to this y. And you might think, well, 
there's a, you, you might think that we could just you know, start by just sort of binding them all together into just a really long vector. So uh, just take y, x1, and x2, use the C command. Now we have a vector that's 36 units long. And then it turns out that we can coerce vectors into matrices using the matrix command. So we can say, well, I want uh, to create this, uh, this, ve this matrix, x alt, and I'm going to say you, you're going to have three columns, and this is going to be what, uh, what I would like. You can see y is here, I've got x1 and x2. Um, and it's, it's going to start by, uh, as you can see, it starts at 1 and just goes down the column. And then it goes, so it fills the matrix using the vector by columns. So you can see that that's, uh, that's one way to create it. The other way is you can specify the number of rows. And as long as you know the number of rows, you're going to create exactly the same matrix. Other thing is that maybe you're more comfortable filling things by row. Maybe that's how your data are organized. And what you'd like to do is you'd like to organize everything by row. You can use the, you can use the option by row equal true to say, or uh, fill this matrix using the vector by rows. So I called this X mess because it messed everything up. See, now it's not organized the way the data seemed to be organized. All of the random parts, which were in one variable, are now in all of the columns and the first four rows. That doesn't really make that much sense. It makes more sense when we're using by row to say, I want 12 columns. We would get the Y in the first row, X1 in the second row, and X2 in the third row. Uh, the initial way that we set it up and the, the sort of the default uh, of setting this up as filling by columns and that's usually the way we organize data anyway. So the vectors all have the same length. You, you can use the C bind command instead of using C. Using C bind command will bind these vectors by columns. So you can sort of bypass that whole step of well, which way is it filling everything? If you want your data in rows instead, you can use the rbind command, and this will give you your data in rows. The only problem with this is that now our data are in a matrix, and the matrix notation is nice in that if I want the first column, I could ask for the first or the first row, I could ask for the first row as follows. Or if I want the first column, I could ask for the first column as follows. But I've lost the names, or I've lost the ability to take the uh, reference this first column by name. So if I wanted to reference it using some kind of dollar extractor or some kind of convenient way uh, to grab that name, uh, it's not really convenient. I suppose maybe I could try doing it this way. And that, that didn't work. Uh, but I, I want to say, you know, that first column's name is Y. And I want to be able to extract that. And maybe you want to have that ability to, to uh, extract data by its name. A class of objects called data frames in R have this ability, and they also have all of the abilities that matrices have. So if instead you wanted to create a data frame, you could just use data frame instead of cbind. That's going to be a nice way to uh, have the matrix. You can see the matrix right there. But if I want to reference just the, the first, um, if I want to reference just y, I can have a nice convenient way to extract just the vector y that went into that data frame. So hopefully this gave you a sense for how to structure and how to create and how to manipulate some of the data um, in R, but also gave you a sense for how data are organized and um, how to manipulate data in, in a useful way. In sort of more complicated applications, um, these, these commands will come up and they're going to be especially useful.